Well, hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Brewing is Life show. I'm Tim Kreitz. You know, few things are as wonderful on a winter night than a nice porter. So we're going to talk about porter. It's the season for it. And this isn't just any porter. This is a pecan porter. I'm going to share the recipe with you. I'm going to go through the steps with you. And I'm going to teach you an easy way to get around the pecan problem. Stick around. started a caveat. This show is for experienced all-grain brewers. If you're a beginning brewer or if you are interested in learning how to brew beer, this show won't answer all your questions. Thankfully, there are lots of other resources available both on YouTube and elsewhere on the web to help get you started. Just bear in mind that this is for experienced brewers as we go through all the processes and procedures. The malt bill for my Harvest Time Pecan Porter has a few extra grains that you don't normally see in a porter. This is primarily to accentuate and complement the taste of the pecans, which we'll be talking about later. The base malts are 8 pounds of 2-row malt and 2 pounds of Munich 30 malt. To that, you'll add 1 pound of honey malt, 1 pound of Crystal 60 malt, 1 pound of Crystal 10 malt, a pound of chocolate malt, 4 ounces of black patent malt, and 4 ounces of flaked maize. Now you'll notice that there are asterisks by the dark malts. That's because you'll want to add those to the mash only during about the last 15 minutes. This will give you all of the positive flavors you're looking for from the dark malts, but without the tannins that can sometimes result from long mash times. The hop schedule is about what you'd expect from an American porter. Half an ounce of Cascade for 60 minutes, and then another half ounce of Cascade at flame out for aroma. You can mash this beer pretty much any way you want to. You can do it as a brew in a bag, or you can use a mash tun. The important thing is just make sure that however you do the mash, you want to end up with five gallons finishing volume at the end of the boil. The strike water should be adjusted for a 151 degree Fahrenheit mash for 60 minutes. I also recommend a mash out if you plan to do a traditional sparge. The boil time is 60 minutes, and for this beer, we're just gonna use two packages of BRY97 pitched dry right into the beer after it's cooled and ready for fermentation. Now, here's a great way to overcome the so-called pecan problem and get some great flavors into a pecan porter. This technique uses the best of both worlds. It uses a combination of chopped, toasted pecans and pecan beer flavoring. You'll start out by heating up a toaster oven and preparing a baking sheet then taking a cup and a half of lightly chopped pecans and putting them onto the sheet. Don't over chop the pecans because you don't want to expose too much of the meat to the beer because that's where the oils are which can cause problems with head retention. Toast the pecans as darkly as you can without burning them. You might need to take them out halfway through and flip them over. This will also help to get rid of some of the oil in the pecans. You'll put these pecans directly into primary fermentation after you are past peak fermentation. Wait until things have slowed down and put it in over the last few days of active fermentation along with about one third to one quarter of a bottle of pecan beer flavoring. These are available from most major homebrew supplies and are just a few bucks. They typically come in one ounce bottles and will tell you to use the whole thing for five gallons of beer. Don't do it. It's too much. These flavorings also have maple added to them and it can really become overpowering if you put too much into the beer. So there you have it. Everything you need to brew a really nice pecan porter without too much muss or fuss. Incidentally, if you do brew this recipe, I'd like to hear from you. Let me know what you thought. Let me know how it turned out. Also, if you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Much appreciated, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Brewing is Live show. Cheers!